You're listening to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio, broadcasting out of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Today's voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. When Christians Speak is dedicated to lifting up the name of Christ Jesus and spreading the good news. Adoration is defined as an intense admiration of the Lord Jesus Christ, culminating in our reverence and worship of Him. Our broadcast is dedicated to exploring the many ways we show our adoration in prayer, supplication, thanksgiving, praise, worship, dance, song, missions, outreach, and Bible study. In adoration, we come before our Lord to have frank and compelling conversation with believers who embody the act of uncompromising appreciation for how the Lord provides for us and to reverence the very essence of who he is. We invite our listeners to sojourn with us to the throne of grace each month and continue to draw nigh to our Savior in love through our adoration. Why don't you just pray for us right now? 
Father, we bless you tonight, oh God. Father, we magnify you and we lift you up, oh Lord. We thank you, oh God, for being so wonderful and kind. Father, we thank you for being counselor. We thank you, oh God, for calling us from where we were into your marvelous light, oh God. Father, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, and we thank you, oh God, that despite ourselves, Lord God, you still find use for us in your kingdom, oh God. Father, we bless you tonight. Father, we we lift you up, we praise you, we magnify you, oh God, and we just say, thank you, Jesus, for so sweet a salvation that you have given to us through Christ Jesus. Father, we just say thank you for not judging us according to our sins. We say thank you, God, for cleaning us up and finding worse in us, oh God. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for the upcoming holiday season, Lord God. Father, we thank you for Christmas. For without Christ, there would be no Christmas. And so, Father, as we approach the holiday season, Lord, as we approach Christmas, oh God, we pray, Lord, that Christians would magnify you in all the earth. We pray, God, that Christians would be a light in this dark world. We pray, God, that you would that you would be glorified throughout the whole world during this Christmas season. Father, I pray right now, oh God, for the remainder of the time that we have together tonight, Lord. Father, I pray that something would be said that would touch someone in their spirit, Lord God. Father, I pray for my brother, my brother Mac. I pray, God, that you would just use him in a mighty way, Lord God. Father, I thank you for when Christians speak radio. I thank you, God, for adoration. And, Lord God, I thank you for this time. In Jesus' name, Lord, may we magnify you. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah and hallelujah. We bless you, God. We bless you, God. Hallelujah. Because you care. For me, in such a special way, Hallelujah. Why I yes. praise you. I bless you, God. I, I thank you, you, Lord. And I magnify your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah, my Lord. We bless you tonight. Yes. Yes, hallelujah, hallelujah, you are worthy, you. Lord, you are worthy. I love you, I love you, Lord, hallelujah. today, because you care for me, it is such a special mm-hmm. way. Mm-hmm. Yes, you did. Why I praise you, I lift you up, and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled. That's why my heart is filled. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Hallelujah. We bless you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. With praise. Thank you, Jesus. Welcome to Adoration. Oh, my gosh. Can you feel God in the spirit realm tonight? Oh, you know, um, first of all, welcome everyone to 
this very, very special broadcast. I'm going to just take a moment just to share a little bit, and you've already heard our guest for the evening pray, but I'm going to give her a proper introduction. <laughs> but <laughs> but um, this has definitely been a, a challenging time for her, and, and I'll let her expand and expound on these things that she is so led but for even your host, it has been a month that has been very challenging on uh, several levels. And it's so funny because if you all listened to the broadcast last month, oh, you know, we had a festive time because we were, you know, we were able to share with uh, Sister Myra Smith, and we broke news that we were more than just missionary friends that we were now <laughs> <laughs> getting ready to be husband and wife and marriage. Praise and, the Lord. You know, we heard all the clapping that came from the Win Christian Speak Talk radio uh, producers and everything like that, and it was just so great. And then within that same week, um, I noticed uh, one uh, afternoon that my, my face felt funny, and by the next morning, I noticed that I no longer had any motion on the left side of my face. No and thinking that maybe it was an allergic reaction, well, I just ran over to the CVS and got some Benadryl thinking that, hey, maybe it's a food allergy and I'll uh, start taking some medication and everything would be all right. But by that Sunday... I realized that everything wasn't all right. And so for once in my life, I actually did the right thing, and I went to seek uh, medical help. And it's so funny. I went to the urgent care uh, as my first stop, and the minute that I walked into urgent care, they took one look at me and immediately called the ambulance because they thought I'd had a stroke. And so... They sent me over to the hospital, and to make a long story short, after running some tests, they realized that, no, you didn't have a stroke, but you have what's called Bell's palsy. And so it's a condition that, you know, I've looked it up. They really don't know uh, how it actually manifests in the body. Some say it's a virus. Some say it's something else. But what it does is it attacks the uh, nerve muscles on the particular side of one's face so that you can't blink, it's hard to eat, and things like that. Well, I tell you, uh, my beloved, that in all of this, I was just praising God that I didn't have a stroke. And so mm. I said, well, I'm going to look a little funny, and as you can hear tonight, I might sound a little funny, but you know what? My mind is right. My limbs are right. Praise the Lord. And I am just praising Praise the Lord. God for even in the midst of the past month, mm -hmm. bringing mm -hmm. healing to my body. Uh, each week gets a little better. Uh, they say it could last anywhere from a few weeks to a few months. But what, however it lasts, the one thing, and I'll just say this even to my sister Tracy, and, and I'll say it to all of you all as well, is that the only thing that I could think of when I was in the hospital is how in the world am I going to take the wedding photo picture with my mouth closed? <laughs> <laughs> I can dig it. So, so, you know, in the midst of Aww. it, the vanity was still there. Like, I just want to look good for my wife. Mm. I want to just look good for, the, the, um, for the, uh, the wedding and everything like that. But in the midst of even that, I also wanted to give a big shout out of much love and appreciation because this past week on November 16th, I celebrated 54 years on this earth and I received so much love from family and friends on Facebook, through text, through all kinds of social media, and I'm just overwhelmed with uh, the love that has been shown to me. And I just wanted to say all these things uh, before we get started. 
So as a way of transitioning, I want to welcome everybody who might be in the chat room tonight. I want to welcome everybody who's listening live right in this moment. I want to thank everybody who could not be online tonight, but uh, we'll listen to the, the broadcast after we're done. I just want to thank everybody who has supported month after month after month. Uh, I just feel so encouraged uh, with the broadcast, Amen. and we're doing a lot of things to uh, draw more people to it. I love the leadership of When Christian Speak Talk Radio. That would be in his founder, Reverend Ray Rose, and also uh, my beloved producer, my friend, my confidant, uh, my ally, my w- whatever she is, the exhorter extraordinaire, Reverend Pat Randall, who's even listening now and actually making sure that everything is sounding great. So I love you, Reverend Pat. You know that already, but I want to tell everybody publicly and tonight, my friends, uh, we have a young lady who is not a stranger to When Christian Speak Talk Radio. She actually <clears throat> was a guest last year with Reverend Pat on her broadcast, which was a blessing. I listened in, and it was so encouraging as uh, our guest was able to share her testimony. Well, what a difference a year makes. That same Tracy Z. Hunt <laughs> <laughs> is now, first and foremost, she is a woman of God, a woman of faith, a woman who I have traveled with to the Democratic Republic of Congo, a woman who is so anointed that when she was sharing some situations that were going on, with her daughter, she got a whole nation, it seemed like, to pray on her Wow. Behalf. And I'm not kidding when I say that. Um, and so if the story ended right there, that would be powerful enough. But Tracy is passionate about outreach, about reaching all people all the time in any way possible, she she shares her testimony because uh, she wants people to understand that just because she saved like the fire filled with the Holy Spirit now doesn't mean that life was always that way. And mm-hmm. she's an mm-hmm. encourager. Yeah, go ahead. And you can mm-hmm. even co-sign on it, my sister. Yeah, and amen, she, amen. <laughs> and, you know, she is out there doing the heavy lifting in the streets, uh, uh, Prince George's County, D.C., Montgomery County, Baltimore, wherever she goes. You know, she goes to Arizona, goes to Texas, wherever she needs to go. She is sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, if I could end it right there, that would be enough to just encourage somebody on the line tonight. But the story continues. So, hey, you know what's really good, Tracy, is that I can tell this thing without reading notes because I know you. Okay? So... Um, then, at last, after much prayer and much praying and, and fasting and laying down and, and just being prostrate before the Lord, Tracy wow. brought a ministry into uh, my nonprofit, Thirst No More Corporation. She came Amen. in first Amen. as our first uh, lady uh, board member. And then the minute that she got in there, said, you know what, there's a new sheriff in town, and so I got something that y'all need. And so she took the ministry that she was already doing, I'm not going to get into that because she can tell her own story, but then she took that ministry, brought it into our uh, nonprofit, and that's one of the reasons why we're on the line tonight. So Amen. she is a board member, but she is also executive director of Feed the 500, and she'll tell you more about it. And let me just uh, let you all know before I uh, bring her on officially that tonight is a night that I'm really putting a lot on Tracy to be able to share uh, 
whichever way she wants to share. I'll kind of leave some questions for her, but she's okay. really going to just do what she does. And in the midst of that, understand this, is that we have something really big happening in December, and I'm going to tell you right now, we're going to talk a lot about it. We want to uh, just encourage our Christian friends who are listening that sometimes you got to do more than just click like on Facebook. Sometimes you got to put your dollar where the effort is to give because in the Bible, Luke 6, 38, I believe, it says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, break down, shaken together, shall men Amen. give unto your bosom. And so we want you all to be encouraged as I introduce my friend, my buddy, my sister, and whatever else she is. Uh, without further ado, Sister Tracy Price. Hey, Tracy. Oh, wow, Mac. <laughs> it's like, were you really talking about me? Um, I'm really talking about you. That was a whole you. lot. That was like <laughs> way, you, like my kids would say, you, you did the most. You were. <laughs> <laughs> um and 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 listening listening to you honestly um i i feel like you're talking about somebody else i really do and mm-hmm. i just want to thank you i want to thank reverend pat for um allowing me this opportunity to be on uh adoration when christians talk radio um it's very humbling and it's very honoring and i do thank you i thank god for um for finding kingdom use for me. I thank God that he has been so faithful to me because you 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 said it, uh, Brother Mac, that I have not always been saved nor sanctified. Um but I praise the Lord that now I am being delivered, and with me, it is an ongoing process. Uh, I I don't say that I'm delivered. I am being delivered because I had a whole lot of junk in my trunk, (laughs) and um, and that is that is why I am compelled to share with people and to be transparent in my testimony with people that. Um, are in need of a savior with people that are in need of hope um because i I know and I am not ashamed of the places where I've been, and they've been some pretty bad places, but people look at me now and they they would never know unless I told them, and so it's very important to me to tell people where I've been because the same God that delivered me from uh, being on crack and on drugs and prostitution is the very same God that can deliver them from their circumstance as well. Um, and that's and that's why I keep doing what I keep doing because there are so many people in need of a savior. And when I go to heaven, I want to take as many people with me as I can. Amen. Praise God. God. um, (coughs) Trace, um, as I said uh, before we actually went live, that, you know, we're just kind of flowing tonight. So I just want you for a moment, you know, a lot of times, you know, people – uh, they stand up in testimony services, and they just say, say things that are kind of generic about, you know, how God has been good to them and brought me from a mm-hmm. mighty long way. Well, you know, the church of today, and even forget just the church of today, but the people who are not part of the true church of today who are out there looking for answers, looking for uh, a, a way to to deal with their pain, to deal with their anxiety, to deal with their issues and problems, sicknesses, diseases, pestilences, whatever. They're looking for honesty within the body of Christ. 
And so just Amen. for a moment, tell everybody, they need to know where you've been. Amen. And, and, and Mac, I, I will tell you that um, my testimony is who I am. It's everything that I am. And I learned, I, I was in a, in a church in Baltimore City. Um, it's called Grace Beyond the Walls Church. And there was a pastor there, Pastor Antoine Payne, that taught me how to be transparent in my testimony, That that taught me the importance of telling people exactly where God brought you from because people who are not saved and some people who are saved are still in those places. Um, and so I, I, I will, I will, I will share my testimony. And right now I'm 53 years old. Um, and I've been, I've been saved for a long time, but I didn't I didn't walk in my salvation um because I was very I was I was still entangled in a life of drugs. Um I started out smoking weed. I went from smoking weed to uh snorting cocaine and when I was about twenty some years old, uh I was introduced to crack cocaine. And that was all she wrote. And that thing took me for a ride that it took me half of my life to get off of. <laughs> my oldest daughter was born addicted to crack. She weighed two pounds and 13 ounces. Um, and that daughter, currently incarcerated, her name is Rossi. She's currently incarcerated in Texas um, where she was born. Um, she pretty much followed in my footsteps. And she was partying, and she partied a little bit too much like her mom, and she got caught up. And now she's in prison, but I thank God that he, because he broke the cycle in me, it's being broken in her. And mm-hmm. and Rossi is doing well. She is now saved. She's in college. Um, she won't be all right. And, and she... She's she's doing better now than she has ever done, um, but I mean that's that that's more recently. Getting back to, to me, um, I smoked a whole lot of crack, and I lived a lifestyle that was akin to smoking crack. I prostituted my body. I I was wretched. I was nasty. I. I did whatever I had to do. My my day started out with me trying to get high, and it ended with me trying to get high. That's what I did. Um, but even through that process, even through that time in my life, God never took his hands off of me because I'm here, because I'm alive, Amen. and because I'm well. Amen. God Amen. never, he never stopped being faithful to me. It was I who was not being faithful to God. My parents were Christians. They raised me. Um, I, I was raised in church, but that I did not have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And um, I was in bad relationships with other men. Um, I have four children, and there are three men who have fathered my children, who have fathered my four children. Um I'm I'm an abuse survivor. Um, yeah, I I had a I had a a bad life. I've 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 been there and I've done that. And through it all, um, I just kept asking God to change me. I kept praying that one day I would not be the person that I was. Um, there were days when I couldn't ever see me not getting high. I never, there there was a a season in my life when I just thought I would die and I was going to be, when they found me, I was going to have a a pipe in my hand and there's going to be some crack on the ground next to my body. 
I could mm. not see I could not see past my own confusion. I, I could not see that even on all of that God was going to use it for good. The trials that I was in, the the bad situations, the bad relationships, the abuse, um I just I could not see this day. I could not see me being on When Christians Talk Radio and sharing my testimony with people who are listening and me sharing my testimony without feeling ashamed of where I've been. Um yeah. I was I was I was a horrible mommy. Um I lost custody of my children. Um every every bad thing that a person could probably imagine that happens to a person on drugs happened to me. It happened to me. But through it all, God never stopped holding on to me. He never stopped holding on to me. And eventually, um, my life started to change. It it took a really it, it it took a bad marriage, and it took me having to be out on my own before I could start walking on my own two feet. Um, the person that I was married to, I, I thank God that we are now great friends, and I am remarried to uh, my husband Neil Price. Uh, who I actually met in ministry, um, and 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 through through the process of me wanting to get better um, and do better, I joined a church, New Song Bible Fellowship Church, where I'm now uh, back in new members class at New Song. Praise the Lord. And um, it's, it took a lot of teaching. It took a lot of teaching from my shepherd, Dr. Bernard Fuller, who uh, walked with me, uh, who visited me on the psych ward when I tried to kill myself um, because I was on a binge. I mean, my life was messed up. It was messed up. I can't say that my life was messed up. Um, and it it took all of these things to happen for me to get to where I am now. God did not waste any of it, and and now, um, I am I I am drug free. Praise the Lord, Hallelujah. I don't yes. smoke crack anymore. Um, I don't smoke cigarettes anymore. Um, I go to work. I have a nice life, and. You know, I I, I I hear myself kind of jumping around, but that's where I am now. But I do want to kind of rewind a little. Um, during the time where I was starting to get myself together, uh, I, I had some bad times. I had some poor times. And during one of those poor times, Mac, I had to find food for my children. And um, I went up to this place up in Frederick, and they gave me some food. It was through a program called Angel Food. And I said, wow, this is really great. I want to be able to help people in need. And that birthed what we now know as Feed the 500. Um, Amen. So it was out of my own need to find food and have food for my family. Um, and even in that, God, God found purpose where I'm thinking, well, my God, I cannot believe I have to drive 70 miles to Frederick to find food for my family. And God said, go ahead and drive up here. I'm going to bless you with food. But out of this, we're going to, we're going to birth a ministry. And that he did. Amen. Amen. And that was uh that was how I started. Um that's that's when Feed the Five Hundred started. 
Amen. Uh, Amen. 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 Well, look, Trace, what we're going to do is this. We're going to pause for a moment just to um, have some announcements play. And then on the other side of those announcements, we're going to talk about Feed the 500, and we're going to talk about what's going to take place in December. Amen? Great. Sounds like a plan. All right. Here we go. We invite you to join us every Tuesday at 7 p.m. for His Abounding Grace with Minister Vanessa Williams. On Wednesdays at 7 p.m., Challenge to Change, where real transformation begins with you. That's with Pastor Paul Morgan of Chosen Generation Ministries in Richmond, Virginia. On Thursdays, live at 12 noon, join Rev. Pat Randall for Declaring the Finished Work. Rev. Ray and friends are here on Friday nights at 7 p.m. with the joy of the Lord on Friday Night Joy. Sundays at 7 p.m., join Rev. Ray for Bread of Life. And don't forget our monthly broadcast. The first Mondays of every month, join Apostle Shirley Jones for Lifeline at 7 p.m. And on every third Monday of the month, Join Evangelist Louis McElwain for Adoration at 7 p.m. Every fourth Saturday of the month, Alabaster Box at 7 p.m. with Prophetess Carla Johnson. Join Rev. Gwendolyn Dixon for the Midday Glory Prayer Line at our new time on Wednesdays at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The dial-in number is 641-715-3580, and the access code is 732-499. Listen to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio. On Blog Talk Radio, iHeartRadio, Speaker.com, all of our broadcasts are available as podcasts through SoundCloud, YouTube, iTunes, Blueberry.com, Zoom.com, Stitcher.com, Lisbon.com, and BlogTalkRadio.com. To listen to our broadcast by phone, dial 646-478-0660. Again, that number is 646-478-0660. Go visit and like our Facebook page, When Christians Speak Talk Radio. Also be sure to check out Christians Against Suicide and Depression. It's a page dedicated to sharing God's love, encouragement, and hope. There are prayer warriors standing by to receive prayer requests, doing intercession for those under attack by the lie and deception of the devil. We know that the devil came to steal, kill, and destroy. But praise God, Jesus came to set the captives free. When Christian Speak Talk Radio is a non-profit ministry, we are dedicated to spreading the gospel of Jesus through our programs and special guests. We exist through the generous support of our listeners. If you are being blessed through this ministry and would like to give a love offering, go to our website and click on our donation page. Your donation will be processed through PayPal. Our prayer is that you may prosper, be in good health, even as your soul prospers. So go out to our website, that's www.whenchristianspeak.com, and click on the donation page. God bless you. Welcome back to Adoration. Uh, Again, we are here tonight with our very special guest, Sister Tracy V. Price, Executive Director of Feed the 500, and Tracy... Uh, you know, you gave us the perfect segue into, uh, I guess, how we're going to really finish out our time together. Because okay. I want you to be able to share 
in any way that the Lord has led you with what's getting ready to take place in December? Okay. Um, Feet the 500 is going to take place on December 17th um, at different locations. And for those of you who don't know, Feed the 500 is an event that God um, placed on my heart eight years ago. Uh, this, this year makes our eighth year of celebrating this event. And um, when I was a single parent, when I had kids, um, Christmas time was very hard for me. Christmas time was a time where I wanted to be joy-filled, but I was worried about my rent. I was worried about food. I was worried about getting presents for my children. And it wasn't, um, it wasn't, it wasn't joy-filled. And when God spoke to me about this, he said, Tracy, I've already fed the 5,000. But I want you to feed one-tenth. He said, feed the 500, and I want you to raise money any way you can through donations, uh, by asking churches, corporations, individuals to donate. And if you're obedient, we're going to make it happen. And, of course, I was like, "Uh, no, I don't want to do that. (laughs) Um, But, (laughs) you know, I... I thought it was crazy. I I didn't have money. I didn't have money to feed my own family, let alone feed 500 families. But God is so faithful. And um, I took the idea to Pastor Fuller, and he said, I think it's a great idea, Tracy. And I got together with some friends of mine and my sister, and we came up with a plan, and we started putting together the Feed the 500 event, and that was in 2009, and now it's 2016, and we're still doing it. And we have a, we have a vendor in Georgia, and, they, uh, and we, we place an order, and then they send the, – the, the, the packages are, are prepackaged, um, but each box of food will feed a family of four for one week. And there's a uh, hamburger, sausage, uh, chicken. There's, I mean, it's it's groceries for a week. It's not just dented cans of beets and you know uh, peas and carrots. It's real groceries for real families that have real appetites. We uh, we collect the money, we place the order, the food comes up. Uh, we have a distribution location in Baltimore. There's a, a church that uh, partners with me in Severn, Maryland, and we provide uh, food to military families. And, and yes, I did say military families at Fort Meade Military Base. And for anyone who doesn't know, one in four military families live in poverty, which I think mm. is absolutely appalling that in the United States of America, we have soldiers strapping up their boots, and then when they get home, got to figure out a way to feed their family. Where does that happen? At Fort Meade Military mm-hmm. Base. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and um, <laughs> and so we we are we are diligent and intentional about blessing military families. Um, we have places in D.C that either we deliver to or that will come to one of the distribution sites. Uh, Little Lights is one of our places um, where we give out food. And we we try to burst the food to people um, that, that have a need. And it's not always a need for food. Um, somebody once asked me, Tracy, how do you distinguish between the needy and the greedy? Well, that's not my job. My job is to use the food as bait. And so when God put this idea on me, he said, Tracy, be a fisher of men. And I want you to use this food because everybody needs to eat. And when they come to you for the food, tell them about me. 
And because it's mm. Christmas time, people are willing to listen. And so that's really, we, we want to meet, that, that's really the purpose of Feed the 500, to meet people at a physical need while demonstrating the love of Jesus Christ. Praise that's God. what Feed the 500 Praise is. That is, what, that is what Feed the 500's purpose is um, in Baltimore, in Washington, at Fort Meade to meet people at a physical need and to uh, demonstrate the love of Christ uh, during the exchange. And we Praise need God. all the help we can get. Mm. We need so people Tracy, to donate. I'm... Yes. <laughs> you, you just read my mind because I was going to ask you to just <laughs> share where the need is. <laughs> um, to feed a family of four for one week, to provide a week's supply of groceries, to a family of four costs $37.50. That's not a lot of money, Brother Mac. That is, let's see, that is Tracy. Don't get your nails done that week. That is mm-hmm. Mac. Uh, how about you make your coffee instead of going to Starbucks for a week? That is, <laughs> you know, that's that's like how how about deny yourself one thing, it's not a lot of money. $37.50 is really not a lot of money when you think about it. And even though it costs $37.50, if you say, I got $10, I got t- please go to our website at www.feedthe500.org. There is a donate tab. And if you will help us, we will be blessed, and so will you. Um, Amen. I, that is that is my heart. That is my heart. And um, I just pray that there is someone listening that that has a, a tender heart for poor people, um, because I, this is what this is what the Lord says. In 1 John 3, 17, he says, If you have the world's goods and you see a brother or sister in need and don't help them, then how can the love of Christ abide in you? Mm -hmm. So for those of us who say we are Christians and don't want to help a poor person, how can the love of Christ abide in you? And that that is the challenge that if there's anybody listening to me that has $5, $10, $20, 3750 and they want to help a family, um, we would be grateful and you would be blessed. And I promise Amen. that all of the money goes to buying food. Um, our overhead is very low. Um, and And the money that we raise really does go to feeding people. I promise you that. I promise it does. Can can I make an additional mm-hmm. plea on your behalf, Tracy? Yes, um, you, yes you can. Because um and and I really want to make this plea towards the many people that are on social media. Um we uh and when I say we, I'm talking about Tracy held a meeting for Feed the 500, that included myself, um, the Thirst No More Corporation's Vice President Paul Davis, others that uh, make up the foundation for the behind the scenes of Feed the 500. And we were talking about how amazing it is that among our friends, and our friends are Christian friends, so many times if we post a picture on our sites uh, with uh, our families or loved ones, um, and we get all these hits um, Mm, 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 on those pictures. But when someone like Tracy, uh, who is trying to really uh, not only uh, talk a good game in reference to 
her faith, but is trying to live what she believes and, and honor who she believes in. When she posts something related to uh, Feed the 500, she gets so little response in return. And we were talking about those kind of things, and, and I bring it to uh, my audience tonight because I'm not uh, a stranger to that dilemma as well as I fundraise all the time. And so uh, just as a kind of a cosign on what Tracy has just shared, it's like my brothers and my sisters, you know, it's all right to pray and to hit like on Facebook or do whatever you want to do as far as affirmation. But when it comes to uh, the fact that if Tracy is not able to reach the goal, and the real goal is 500 families, and 500 families, because I do the math, at 3750 per box for four people, that is $18,750. Now, I'm going to say something that Tracy probably uh, wouldn't say, but I'm going to say it. It's like last year uh, we were part of the fundraising effort as well, and it got to the point where it was last minute, and I think in about two weeks we raised about $11,000 over that mm-hmm. period of time. You know, so we know that God can do this, and we know that there are people of God that understand the benefits of sowing and reaping. So we wanted to get Tracy online tonight to be able to share why she is so passionate about this at a time where many of us are getting ready to go and celebrate Thanksgiving and sit uh, with our families and watch football and eat turkey, but Tracy, Mm. in her heart, went to a different time where families, forget about toys, families don't have food on the table, and so Tracy, by way of the Holy Spirit, is inspired to do this, not for uh, any kind of personal gain, but that others may be able to eat and to see the manifestation of the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's right. That's, through that's a box right. Of food that's right. And a gospel Amen. message. Go ahead, Tracy, say more. And 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 and, and brother Mac, I, I wanna say this that I I am very ordinary. I am you Ordin, ordinary. I go to a nine to five every day. I live in a townhouse with my husband and my my children. Uh, I drive a Honda. I am an ordinary person, but I have a heart for poor people because it is very hard when you don't have. It is very easy for us to look at a person and make an, a, a, a judgment call based on where we are in our lives. So when we see a person on the street, we say, I know that person can do better. I know that per. Do you know what? That's not the question. The question is, what can you do to help them? Mm. Christians need to help people. We need to be a blessing out of what God has blessed us with. I am an ordinary person. There's nothing there's nothing special about me other than Jesus Christ. That's what's special about me. And I I love the Lord. I love what God has done for me. I have come from a very hard life, a life of lack, a life of confusion and and misery. But in God's loving kindness towards me, he has blessed me beyond my wildest dreams. And I dare not forget what it used to be like. I dare not 
I, that there is somebody listening to me that can understand where I'm coming from. Mm. Christmas time for people can be very discouraging. It can be very hard. It can be, it can be sad. Christmas time should be joy filled because we are celebrating the fact that a savior was born. Christians need to lift that up for everybody and give people the hope of a savior. Giving someone sustenance, giving someone food, saying, God has considered you today and, and God loves you, he's making a provision for you and your family. That speaks volumes to somebody who's hungry. Because you can't minister to nobody who's stumbling, is rumbling. Can't do it. And so I just, I just flatten myself out. I I pour myself out to say that I, I do this because somebody needs to. Somebody has to Somebody has to care. And I know I'm not the only person out there that cares. I know I'm not. Just for the record, I don't have I don't get a salary for this. I don't pay myself. I don't break myself off. I don't tip myself or any of the volunteers that help me. Everybody that is affiliated with Feed the Five Hundred is a volunteer. Nobody gets paid. We spend the money on food. And I I am being straight up honest. We spend the money on food. Yes, there are some expenses, but they are minimal. The places where we distribute food are free of charge. They're donated. There are other people that donate goods and services that donate lunch for our volunteers. So... I don't know what else I can say, Brother Mac, to encourage people to donate to this very, very worthy endeavor. And uh, please help <laughs> us feed the 500. Tracy, you can tell them one, one other thing. Um, first of all, everybody, you know that in order to do this, you just go to www.feedthe500.org. Uh, but also, uh, Tracy, please give them – the deadline because uh, the, the food has to actually be ordered. So please give the deadline for when money's in need. Sure. December 5th. Uh, I, I think that's a Monday. Um, it's, it's like a, it's, it's, it's about a week and a half prior to the deadline, but December 5th is, is the deadline. And if you go to the website, um, it's, it, it has our mailing address in it as well. I know that there are still some people that, um, that don't want to donate online, and you can also mail us a check or money order to our post office box. The address is on the uh, it's on our website. Uh, my contact information is on the website, and I would love to hear from you. I would love it, love it, love it. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. I would just love it. <laughs> Amen. Well, I'm gonna tell you something, Tracy. As always. There are not enough minutes in an hour to be able to cover everything that I would like sure. to cover. Um, and, you know, the minute that we get to sharing, I'm looking at the clock and I'm like, oh, my gosh, we're uh, you running know, out I of just time looked up here. Too. I, said, hey. <laughs> I got comfortable at the Amen. end, didn't I, Mac? <laughs> yeah, you got real. You okay. got real. But you know what? Amen. But that's what's needed because, um, again, uh, we need to encourage the body to not just say, I'm going to pray for you, but to, you know, pick up a shovel, pick up a pen to write a That's check, right. to go online and to uh, sew online or, or do whatever is needed. Sure. And not just for Feed the 500, but for many other worthy organizations and charities that are out there that are really trying to do the work of God. And I'm going to say this as well, that I know 
my beloveds who are listening, I know that you get inundated with other charitable things. I certainly do, and I do have some that I give to on a regular. But at the same time, how many times can you get there and find a cause where the woman who is leading the charge has been this transparent and you could actually reach out and touch her because she's real. She's not the United mm-hmm. Way. She's not, you know, uh, mm. uh, Susan Coleman. She is Tracy yeah. Price and Feed the 500, and she is right in the state of Maryland. You can reach out and meet her, touch her, feel her, and understand right. where she's coming from. And, hey, guess what, my beloveds? And on the last Saturdays, uh, in the months of March through October, if you want to come into Baltimore City, you can reach out and touch her there because she's right in Baltimore City doing outreach uh, right there uh, at what is that, St. Vincent's uh, Church. So yeah, It's in North and, and Fayette. There you go. There you go. So, um, you know, this thing is real, and I just wanted to give Tracy an opportunity to come and share in the way that she does because I'm telling you. you guys, you cannot meet Tracy and not fall in love with her and the, and more importantly, to fall in love with her vision. So, Tracy, we are right yes, up on the hour, and my Amen. producer is back there saying, okay, Mac, wrap it up, wrap it up. <laughs> so, Amen. So, Amen. Um, so, But what I would like for you to do now is uh, we never know who's listening on the line or who might have an opportunity to listen to this broadcast days later. But I just want you to close this out, to share, to sow seed into someone else's life in any way Mm -hmm. that you see or feel, or have been led, if you would do that for us. Amen. Amen. Father, we bless you tonight, God, and we thank you, Father, for uh, your leadership, oh God. Father, we thank you for your direction, Lord God, uh, not only in this, in, this, in this radio broadcast, God, but in our lives, Father. Father, I pray that uh, I can only be a reflection of you, and I pray, God, as we go through this holiday season that... Uh, that someone would benefit from not only this broadcast, not only from Feed the 500, but someone, Lord God, would benefit, Lord God, from you being their Savior. God, that's all I ask is that you be revealed and magnified and lifted up. God, we bless you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I bless you, O oh God. Thank you, Father. So you mm. can use me. Hallelujah. Give myself away. Yes. Oh, Lord. I mm. give myself away. Hallelujah, Father. I so thank you, Jesus, for God. I thank you, Lord, for blessing me. Hallelujah. Here I stand, Lord. God bless you. You're listening to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio, broadcasting out of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Today's voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. 
when Christians speak is dedicated to lifting up the name of Christ Jesus and spreading the good news. When the 